All right guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be tying my stonefly pattern. I've been using this fly in the past few videos and I had a few people asking me to do a fly tying video on this fly. I had already planned on doing a, a tying video just because I knew people were gonna be asking for a tying video after I uploaded those videos. So that's what we're gonna be tying today. I came up with like a little funny name for this fly. It's called the stone pheasant. But basically it's just a simple stone fly, almost exactly like a pheasant tail. But I tie this in size 10, 8, maybe even a size 12. The only difference between this and a pheasant tail nymph really is that I put a hare's ear collar on the fly and I use a dubbing loop so that it makes it uh, a lot more buggier looking. In this video I'm going to be tying the brown stone fly which is my most productive one but at the end I'll show you guys I also do two other color variants which are a golden stone fly and a, a little black stone fly. This is my go-to stone fly pattern. I use stone flies a lot so and stone flies are heavy you know they get down to the bottom so you're going to lose a lot of them. Uh, so I like tying this pattern just because it's super simple and it still gets the job done So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the materials and then we'll get into tying it Don't forget to leave a like if you like the video leave a comment below for any suggestions And if you're not subscribed already consider subscribing to see more videos like this in the future And let's go ahead and get into it To start things off. We're gonna be using a brown thread here. I'm using Superfly 6 aught The tail and body of this fly are made from natural colored pheasant tail fibers the ribbing is made from small copper ultra wire. For the collar, I like to use reddish brown hair's ear dubbing, but that's just because I think the reddish brown matches the pheasant tail a lot better. The bead is a 3.8 millimeter slotted tungsten bead in copper. And last but not least, the hook is an Orient Sun 5240 in size 10. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into tying this fly. All right, so to start things off here, we're gonna go ahead and put our hook in the vise here upside down and go ahead and slip our bead over the hook point and then we can just flip the hook around and get that secured in the vise and get ready for tying. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and get your thread ready on your bobbin. Once you have your thread secured on your bobbin, you can go ahead and start your thread here behind the bead and then just start to work your way backwards and then once you get to that halfway point, you can come in with your scissors and snip off the tag. And then once you have that tag snipped off, go ahead and just work your thread to the bend in the hook. At this point, you want to go ahead and grab your pheasant tail. And for my tail, I like to strip off about six fibers, but it's all preference, so you can strip off however many you want. After cutting off your pheasant tail fibers for the tail, we're going to go ahead and secure those here to the hook shank with a pin trap and just make a few light wraps and then you can come in and adjust those fibers to your preferred length. And once you have them to your preferred length, you can go ahead and work your thread all the way up to behind the bead. Just making sure that all of those fibers sit nicely there on the hook shank. And then once you make it up behind the bead, you can go ahead and just pull the excess pheasant tail fibers off. Next, you could take a piece of your ultra wire and start by tying it in behind the bead and then just start working your thread backwards to where we tied in the tail. Now that we have the ultra wire tied in, we can go ahead and grab our pheasant tail again. And for the body, I like to pull off about eight fibers, just a few more than we did for the tail, making sure that we keep those tips aligned. Now that we have our pheasant tail fibers for the body, you can go ahead and tie those in here with a few light wraps. And then I just like to pull them just so they're slightly shorter than where the bead is. Then you can work your thread all the way up to behind the bead. Once the thread is situated behind the bead, go ahead and grab your pheasant tail fibers and we're gonna start wrapping those up the hook shank, making touching wraps. As you're wrapping the fibers, you just wanna make sure that they're not overlapping each other, but are laying flat next to each other. One of the reasons that I tie the fibers in with their tips without cutting the tips off first is so that when you're wrapping them up the hook shank, it sort of already makes a natural taper to the fly. And then once you have the fibers all the way up behind the bead, you can go ahead and take your tying thread and tie those off, and then come in with your scissors and cut off the excess. Now grab your ultra wire and we're going to counter wrap that up the fly, segmenting it about five to six times. 
And once you make it up behind the bead, what I like to do when I'm counter wrapping wire is crisscross it with my thread so that I can make the thread pull the wire tight. And then after I give it about three or four wraps, just crisscross it back so that my thread's going the correct way. And then I come in and helicopter off that ultra wire. For the collar, we're gonna go ahead and create ourselves a dubbing loop. And if you're not familiar with creating dubbing loops or using them, there are plenty of YouTube tutorials on how to make dubbing loops. So I suggest watching one of those before continuing with this fly. For dubbing, I like to use a generous amount for my stone flies just because I think it builds up the thorax a little bit better and gives it that bulkier look that stone flies have and it helps make the fly look a lot more buggier. After picking out your dubbing, go ahead and finish creating your dubbing loop so that we can wrap on the collar of this fly. Once you start wrapping the collar, Depending on which way you spun the dubbing loop, it might try to jump backwards on you, so you just have to use a little bit of force to make sure that it's wrapping forward. And once you finish wrapping on the collar, you can go ahead and take your tying thread and secure that off with a few wraps. And then you can come in with the tying scissors and cut off the rest of the dubbing loop. And once you finish that, just take a few more wraps here and then come in with your whip finishing tool and make a three or four turn whip finish and then cut your tying thread free. As I like to do with all my flies, we're gonna finish with putting a little bit of UV resin on the thread wraps just to secure those and make the fly more durable. Once you cure the UV resin with a UV light, the fly is complete. As I said at the beginning of this video, I like to tie this fly in a few other color variations as well, including all black for little black stone flies and a golden version for golden stone flies. At its core, this fly is nothing more than a bigger, buggier pheasant tail nymph. I like this pattern because it's simple and fast to tie, which means I'm not afraid to lose it and get it down to the bottom of deep runs. This also probably explains why it is my top producing stonefly pattern. But that's going to be it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I had a few people asking for the stonefly fly tying video, so I hope this helps you guys out. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new here to the channel and want to see more videos like this in the future. Go ahead and leave a like if you like this video and want to see more fly tying videos. And leave a comment below for any suggestions and let me know what you thought of this video. And until next time, peace.